Thank you um, so much for the invitation. Uh, it's really nice to be here. <laughs> it's a lot of friendly faces. Um, so I want to just kind of start off, uh, since I'm in a school, to sort of talk about some paintings that I made um, in grad school at Yale and some work that I was doing in undergrad. I'll start off with that. So. These first two paintings, they're uh, early paintings. I made them about like 11 years ago. Can you hear me okay? Um, and they mark like a major transition in my work. They are the first two paintings uh, in which I was looking at my own life and also in which I made from life. Um, and at the time, it was like actually like a really brand new kind of like a revolutionary like way of working because it was so different from how I had made work in the past in, in undergrad. Um, my earlier work was kind of all sort of focused around this uh, project about uh, like an imaginary island. So the work was, I made it kind of over five years and like that's what I applied to grad school with. but. At the time, I was kind of like piecing together photographs or like working just uh, purely from my imagination. Um, so these are, this is some images that I was, uh, of the work I was making in undergrad. Um, and this is kind of like the work that I applied to Yale with. But essentially, the work was all about this kind of imaginary island. And I was making paintings and drawings uh, and books. And it was really kind of, the work was driven by this sort of exploding nonlinear narrative. Um, and the project really kind of grew out of my desire uh, to have a place to hold all my interests. Um, you know, like, as a, as a young student, I was very uh, kind of torn. I wasn't sure, you know, I had all these different interests and I wasn't sure kind of what I wanted to make work about. Um, so this was just a kind of place that I could bring everything. Um, you know, I was interested in, in inventing characters, like interested in narrative and science and nature and architecture, city planning, sustainability, all, all that stuff kind of like came to this one place. And in undergrad, I was also really interested in like the artists that were kind of like world creators. So people like Matthew Ritchie and Henry Darger, Dana Schutz's Frank, The Last Man on Earth paintings and Hilary Harkness. Um, and I was also, it re like, the project really was a kind of, like, blending of fiction and nonfiction, and, um, and it, it was kind of, like, uh, sort of, you know, inspired by my own experiences, but sort of, like, all shrouded in a kind of fiction or, like, exaggerated, like, you know, like, my own history, but kind of exaggerated. So I guess to make, like, a long story short, like, in grad school at Yale, I was actually kicked off the island, like, was told, like, I couldn't make work about it anymore. And um, so the project, like, totally imploded. Uh, and at the time, it was, like, extremely painful and, like, traumatic experience. But what ended up happening is when all the fiction kind of, like, peeled away, um, I was left with just, like, the personal. And so um, I started just to make work from life. And at this time, you know, I was really kind of upset and I didn't know what to make work about. Uh, and so it was between like my first and semester, se second year at Yale and I like left school and I went back home to Wisconsin and I went up north to my cottage and I just kind of, you know, it's just like a place that I love and it felt like a safe place and I kind of felt like, well, if any, if any place is going to kind of help me out and, and let me know what kind of work I need to make, like it's this place. And so I actually just started to make paintings like about my cabin. Um, you know, it's a kind of place that really has sort of informed me and sort of taught taught myself about like things that I care about. Um, you know, it's like a place that I go to be sort of together with my family and friends in nature. Um, it's a place for kind of like ritual gathering for family and friends and it also has this kind of like authenticity that I'm interested in. Um, you know, it's filled with these kind of weird handmade objects uh, which are sort of in bad taste, but they're really sort of charming and kind of acceptable within its context. 
Um, and the whole cabin is also sort of like frozen in time. My, my grandfather built it in the 60s like for his family, and so it hasn't really changed since then, since the 1960s. Um, just to show kind of my process of working, you know, I always make drawings and, and paintings, uh, like drawings and works on paper from life. And, you know, sometimes I use the works on paper uh, as studies uh, for oil paintings. But also, like, I think of the works on papers as just, like, works on their own. And, like, often they end up being better than my studio paintings or the oil paintings. Um, so, you know, this is an oil painting that I made from this work on paper. Um, and you can see, obviously, like, a lot changes in the studio and a lot changes with, like, the medium of oil, oil paint. Like, I have a lot more control. Um, you know, like, I, the palette of greens changed quite a bit. Um, and this painting is from 2011, and at that time I was, like, really, really interested in making these incredibly detailed paintings. Uh, with it's just like an overabundant amount of information. Um, and really was sort of basically because I was just like really interested in like painting about this particular place. Like I wanted to describe this actual place. Um, and then, yeah, and so, so like all the earlier work really is kind of like, I see it as a, a portrait of a place. Um, and I wanted to connect also obviously like how I was painting, like to what I was painting and it seemed important because I really wanted these paintings to remain sort of just like faithful representations. <clears throat> and I was painting these paintings in really kind of direct way. Like to me these are pretty like flat footed paintings and in some aspects like they have more in common with maybe drawing. Um, but definitely, like, the paintings were really labored. Like, at this time in 2011, I was really only making probably five oil paintings a year. Like, they were just really super slow uh, and labored over and really kind of like labors, labors of love um, and kind of devotional, like, to this place. Um, so, you know, at, at that time, or, you know, like, when I think about sort of specificity and believability in painting, I looked to someone like Giovanni Bellini, and this is probably one of my favorite paintings ever, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this painting, it's in the Frick. But, um, you know, at the time, I, I wanted my work to kind of transport the viewer through specificity to these places that I cared about, and, you know, what's amazing to me about Bellini is just how kind of each plant and weed and leaf is different, uh, you know, like a pebble, or a kind of crack um, is painted with sort of just as much care as the saint. You know, they're just like, there's no hierarchy um, in the paintings and they're just so devotional and full of love and care. Um, and even just sort of like the background is also just, you know, sort of painted with just as much care as the foreground, which, you know, a, a lot of landscape paintings sort of like aren't, this is like, that's very different. And also you have this, this like really adventurous space. You know, you can kind of go into the cave, uh, sort of scale the wall, um, just the kind of like time, like I was really interested in like the kind of time uh, it took for this painting to reveal itself. And you know, I can spend sort of like an hour in front of this painting and then come back, you know, three months later and spend another hour and just, I, you know, each time it's such a different experience and just very simply kind of I feel so much wonder and, and magic in the way that paintings can really like transport me to like a different time and space. You know, I just feel like that's an incredible thing that paintings can do. And, um, and yeah, for me, what really gives me that believability is just this really high degree of um, specificity and diversity in, in the picture. Um, so like after I painted those cottage paintings, like I, for a year, I really started to think, oh, you know, like maybe it's actually the wilderness kind of, my experiences in the wilderness, like around the cottage, that really kind of also sort of inform uh, my feelings of this place. Um, and like generally speaking, um, 
in all my work and all the like the three different series that I work in like generally like I'm interested in kind of like humans relationship to nature and in particular like my own desire to feel a closeness to nature and just that sense of kind of renewal and peace that I find uh, you know like is that is there a way to kind of communicate that in a painting and so you know like when I do include figures especially kind of like in the earlier work you know, I try to place them in situations where they aren't necessarily so obviously the subject of the painting. In a sense, like, you know, the environment that they're in is just as important as the figures. And many times, like, the figures are kind of, you know, like in this painting, the figure that's in the water, sort of, he's like literally kind of engulfed by the water and immersed. Uh, or other, otherwise, like, a lot of times the figures are kind of made up of colors that like surrounding them, much like, like the deer hunters that I paint, which you know, like are in camouflage and literally kind of just disappearing back into nature. Um, at this time, like this painting is from, I think like 2012 or 2013. And at that time I was really spending a lot of time like hiking and wandering in the woods and like often getting lost and me kind of that feeling of being lost is very kind of terrifying and exciting and so this creek is uh, is a place that i found um when i was lost and kind of one of my favorite ways of hiking is to actually like hike up shallow creeks and rivers um and so that's how i found this place but you know, that feeling of kind of being lost and thinking about that sort of psychological state of being lost and found uh, and what kind of things you can find like when you are lost, like that interests me quite a bit uh, in having a sort of experience in nature, but also in like what it means to be an artist. Um, you know, whether it's really kind of losing yourself in the work in, or in the making, um, or it, whether it's kind of tr like trudging forward through these periods of like high, high amounts of doubt. Um, you know, like I, I think kind of think like my experiences being lost like in the outdoors have really helped me realize that kind of like doubt and that f and feeling lost in the studio is actually like a really good and necessary feeling and a necessary aspect of making work. So, um, I also draw and paint deer hunters every fall. And um, so I kind of split, at this time I was, I was splitting up sort of my years into these three different sections where I would kind of go out and have an experience and document it uh, from drawing and painting from life and then I would kind of bring back the material to my studio to make work about it. And so, you know, I was spending time at my cottage and I was uh, drawing and painting deer hunters in the fall, uh, bow, like bow hunters. And then I was also canoe, like canoe camping in the boundary waters of Minnesota. And so these are some drawings of bow hunters. And um, these are some newer, like these are some newer works on paper that were just in my last show. But um, you know, I grew up deer hunting and like a lot of girls and boys in Wisconsin, there's like quite a few people here from Wisconsin tonight. <laughs> so they all know that, you know, boy, like boys and girls often do grow up hunting in Wisconsin. It's totally kind of ingrained in the culture. Um, but at, you know, like I became like a really conflicted hunter, like as a teen uh, and like I rebelled and became a vegetarian. Uh, and then when I returned to uh, like hunting as an adult, you know, I still really was so conflicted. Like I felt very conflicted and, you know, I kind of like that. Like I like that hunting is a sticky subject and that it's psychologically charged and, and it's heated for me, but it's also like really kind of, basically every hunter that I know, like in my f family or friends, like is also really conflicted about why they hunt. But yeah, so what, but what really interests me, I guess, about making paintings about deer hunters is trying to kind of create a more realistic image of what it means to be a deer hunter, you know, particularly a, a bow hunter. Uh, you know, the images that we're all used to seeing, um, 
really kind of show hunting as, like they show the end result of hunting. Um, you know, they, they show the trophy or the kill. Um, and it's sort of totally the opposite from the actual experience of what it is like to hunt. Um, you know, for the majority, like, hu you know, hunting is really a kind of ritual, like a sort of meditation with nature. I mean, it's really, you're just sitting up in a tree, like totally quiet um, for hours and hours and hours, like, and you're sort of looking at nothing and everything. Um, you know, it's a really different way of sort of experience, like seeing and experiencing the woods. Um, you know, like even the camouflage that you wear kind of helps you remain quiet and it sort of disappears you into nature. And yeah, like 99% of the time you spend hunting, like you don't take home a deer. Um, you don't get a clear shot or you don't see any deer at all. Um, but you do take away this kind of really rich experience of seeing and being still. So in, in a general way, like I, can, I see sort of deer hunters as potentially representing kind of like humans' complex relationship with the natural world. You know, like a deer hunter is a person that feels such a kind of strong connection to nature and feels kind of this wonder and empathy towards this animal but then maybe like the end result is that they kill it. So, you know, like the questions arise to sort of like, you know, like why, like are hunters, you know, hunting to kind of connect with some sort of primal sense? Like, is it more about sort of finding uh, a more responsible relationship to sort of like the food that we eat? Um, is it about kind of the conservation of forests? You know, like why do people still hunt? Like this really interests me. Um, so in 2014, I had a solo show of just all of my Boundary Waters paintings. So in this show, I presented um, about like eight, eight years of um, working from life out in the Boundary Waters. And I showed a lot of like my works on paper. And they were hung kind of like salon style around the gallery, uh, the smaller ones. And then the larger works on paper were kind of like dispersed among the oil paintings. Um, but like leading up to the show, I noticed how I really enjoyed this experience of seeing the works together, um, like as a group. Um, you know, it started to really kind of um, express this as sort of adventurous narr narrative. You know, each piece takes you to a different, pl ti uh, different place, a different time of day. You know, I noticed that this was like a, a very different experience than just like in my singular works. So. In a sense, like, you know, after the show, I kind of wanted to sh try to find ways to build a more complex and adventurous space within each painting. Um, so, like, finding places while I was out um, that provided a bit more complexity, like, formally within the space and the composition. Um, but kind of being able to move through the trees, you know, to the island. Um, then just kind of snake around the lake. And you can see like this is the work on paper and the larger oil painting. Like this painting is about like six feet by eight feet. Um, yeah, thinking about sort of seeing through and down and back. Um, and in this painting kind of totally eliminating the horizon line. And at this time like, uh, when I was thinking about sort of trying to build a little bit more of an adventure space within each each landscape painting, like I was looking at uh, a lot of like early Renaissance paintings, and this is another kind of amazing painting in New York at the Met, uh, the, this Bruegel painting, and the space, you know, the space is so com incredibly complex and adventurous. Like there's so much going on. You can have you know lunch, you know, down here like at the bottom of the tree. There's this kind of like maze-like path through the wheat field. Um, and then you can kind of like, you know, like go through sort of to the right side of the painting and like there's this whole other, there's this whole other kind of landscape seen through those trees and then obviously like this vast space. You know, I was really interested in kind of like the time that you kind of spent and how sort of slowly like a painting like this can reveal itself. 
um, just for context to show you like where I was painting or making those Boundary Waters paintings. Um, the Boundary Waters is like a wilderness. Has anyone been there to the Boundary Waters? Yeah. <laughs> so like um, it's a wilderness park. Uh, it's about like a million acres and it's in the northern part of Minnesota and it's literally called the Boundary Waters because it borders Canada. Um, but yeah, the park is made up of thousands of lakes uh, and they're connected with these small bits of land and like trails, uh, like on the map, sort of black lines, those are portages and that's how you kind of move from lake to lake. To lake. But what's interesting is like this, um, like those, those trails, the portages have just been um, traveled for like thousands of years, like first by Native Americans and then by kind of like f the fur traders and the voyagers. Um, and like the whole park, there's no roads in the park, so the only way you can kind of explore the park is literally kind of by canoe, or in the winter, you can explore by like dog sled or skiing. So um, just to show you kind of what the camp, the campsites aren't marked, they're only marked like on the map. Um, and then basically, you know, I just load up, I would load up my canoe with all my gear, like under that dog. <laughs> there's um, a, you know, it's my sleeping bag, my food, all my gear, and I would usually go out for kind of like two weeks at a time and try to take the bare minimum uh, so I could get pretty far out in the park. Um, but that, I would just paint from life, and you know, what I love about painting from life outdoors is that I'm simply kind of just reacting to what's around me. Um, you know, I'd spend three weeks just intuitively making work um, sometimes they're small, like this is just a small, like a really small, quick, quick painting. Like it's about sort of six inches by eight inches, like a Ziploc bag size. Um, and then I would, you know, if I saw something that interested me, I would just like quickly make a painting. I wouldn't really think about it. And when I would finish a painting, I would just put it away. You know, there's there's no way to kind of look at your work out there. So um, I found that actually like really exhilarating. Just like make work and put it away, and I wouldn't even think about it until I got back to my studio. You know, like weeks or even like a month later or something, and then I would be able to kind of like hang things up and try to figure out if anything was any good. So this painting was made in my studio. And it's just sort of such a totally different experience, like working in the studio compared to life, or compared to like outdoors. And my painting, my paintings, especially from this time, like this painting from 2014, you know, like really labor intensive um, and super slow compared to those works on paper. Um, but I noticed like I always tried, I always kind of was finding this like really hypnotic space in the painting. And so in this painting, it's definitely like the water where I would really sort of lo just lose myself in a sense, kind of like turn it off. Like, well, and I really kind of enjoyed finding that really hypnotic space in the painting. And I think it was because I was sort of trying to get back to just what it felt like to paint outside. And yeah, like this, this kind of like hypnotic space uh, in the trees here, kind of getting lost in the trees and the tent screen and the pattern of light on the ground. And this figure is my dad. Um, and this painting really ended up being my kind of favorite painting from that show in 2014. And I would say has really kind of inspired my, the work that I'm even making today. Um, and it's not really something that I had planned, but kind of after I made it, it took a while to realize, but like the, the reason that it, it kind of kept my interest is it really actually started to like show kind of like two spaces at once. There was a kind of like interior, like you could see like the interior, um, like inside the tent and then sort of, you know, like the landscape around it. So it felt like there was these sort of like two worlds kind of colliding and it was really only divided by this like pointillism over the tent screen. Um, so back in 2010, I was invited by this council in Canada to represent Quetico Provincial Park in, Can in um, Ontario for the summer as an artist in residence. And Quetico is just like the Canadian boundary waters, basically. It, like, touch it touches the boundary waters. And um, 
they have an artist in residence program there. They give you like a cabin. I stayed in the cabin and then like on the front of the cabin is a studio. And the cabin was on kind of like the main lake, French lake, where all of the um, people going out in the park would start their trips. So there was a lot of activity and I got a chance to kind of meet and talk to people sort of before they went out and then kind of at, like after when they were coming back. And I was there for, for the whole summer and the studio also had electricity, so it was the first time that I got to really work at night, um, be because before that it was so, you know it's just like pitch black. All you have is your headlight, and I had never made kind of paintings at night before. So I would kind of go sit. I would go sit out on that deck and just kind of look at the stars, because there's nothing else to do, and it's so beautiful. Um, but and then I would kind of like come back inside the studio and pay like paint for sort of 10 or 20 minutes until I lost like the image and when I lost the image I would just kind of turn the lights back off and then go sit on go sit on um, the porch and sort of look at the stars again and so like that residency in 2010 really uh, totally helped me start to make these night paintings which I've continued since and because the residency was for three months, um, I was able to take many trips like throughout the park. And here's another night painting um, with a little bit more activity. You can, there's like a fire and some flashlights and some paddlers in the shadow. But yeah, I couldn't figure out how to make these night paintings from life before this residency and it also I just probably wasn't very confident in my painting to be able to sort of, you know, do it from my imagination yet. So these are some, like, oil paintings that... There's a smaller oil painting and a larger one. Another work on paper. So I always kind of try to have a research component to within my series. So in 2011, I had um, I got a fellowship to go study at the National Gallery of Art in, in Ottawa, Canada. And I studied painters like Tom Thompson and the Group of Seven, um, as well as kind of some early Canadian explorers uh, like Paul Kane and, Tom Th and um, George Back. Um, so they're, like some of their drawings from like the following the fur trader routes, but Tom Tom Thompson came came before the Group of Seven. But um, all these painters, they painted in um, Algonquin Park, which is kind of between Toronto and Ottawa. Um, in the 1920s, they they would basically they they spent their summers up there painting. And a lot of them worked either as like artists or graphic designers in Toronto, and then they would kind of go up as a group and paint together um, over the summer. But Tom Thompson was kind of bef before them. They were really inspired by Tom Thompson, but he was a loner. He was painted by himself. And then in 2013, I studied at um, the National Gallery uh, in Norway, in Oslo, where I focused on Nordic landscape painting and field drawings from the mid to late 19th century. Um, and painters like Eilif Peterson here and Harold Solberg, um, Tom Thomas Fernley and Johann Christian Dahl. Uh, Harold Solberg is really one of my favorite pa uh, painters, or Nordic landscape painters. And I became really drawn to kind of his quiet expressiveness. Um, you know, I feel like these paintings are really kind of actually like bubbling at the surface with emotion, but they're still like very fixed and really just kind of like purely representational. And Thomas Fernley, um, who is totally like the champion of trees. Yeah, all of those painters, I was also like really drawn to that kind of like northern light. And that was the kind of light that I grew up with in Wisconsin. So as I started to become kind of more comfortable with uh, these night scenes, I, started, I began to kind of like piece together some of my drawings to make kind of like a, 
di like different scenes in my studio. So this was something that I kind of pieced together from sort of like a photograph and from a couple of drawings, and then like one of like a larger uh, landscape painting. And then these fire paintings, I would kind of like work on the fire paintings at night by just making like a, a, a little sketch. And I would write down kind of color notes and write down just language about like what the light was doing, what the color looked like. And then kind of in the morning, I would sort of like make, like make the painting sort of like in a representational way, like just like purely like you know, in the same place that I was sort of making the sketches the night before, but I would just turn the painting from like day to night. And, you know, I've made several versions of this painting, which often like happens when I'm trying to kind of, um, trying but sort of failing to re capture a specific feeling or a specific experience. And another version using kind of more inventive color and sort of tweaking areas to try and hopefully bring like a little bit more expressiveness to the painting. But yeah, like this is a painting like I tried to make as an oil painting and it just like didn't work. And sometimes that happens. And it's kind of frustrating, but like I've just kind of come to realize that some of the paintings, they just work better as work, like works on paper. And that, that's kind of okay. Um, so here's that same painting, kind of in a different context. This is like a group show that I was in um, in Chicago. The show was called Inside the Outside at Alderman Ex Exhibitions, and it was curated by Joseph Grigley, who's an artist and he's a critical theorist and also an avid fly fisherman. So the kind of the gallery, he turned the gallery into this kind of um, into kind of a fictional cabin, like he installed like a wood burning stove, uh, and the show was really kind of surrounded by, surrounded around kind of like how artists like represent nature like differently in different ways, and you know like the best part about kind of showing your work is when someone can like teach you something completely different about your own work, or how you know when they can see your work in such a different way than you do, and. He really w responded to my works on paper, and you know, at the time I was kind of like float framing all my works on paper. Like I wanted to show like the edges, and I wanted them to feel kind of like these documents that have had traveled. Um, but he was actually interested in like the bat, like the back <laughs> of of my works on paper. You know, like the notes, and you know, like they literally have like squashed bugs, or like they're really scraped or kind of dinged you know, like, and dirty. So he actually, um, this is like one of the smaller works on paper that he hung, he hung the actual back, back of the painting. So for the first couple of years that I was making paintings out in the Boundary Waters, I was making just small, like, Ziploc-sized paintings and, um, you know, they were also like watercolors. I was, I was making watercolors and that was just really to kind of conserve space. Um, so, and also you can see like, like the painting on the left, like it started actually raining, like when I was painting it. Um, and I ended up sort of a couple years later switching to fluid acrylics and that was m mainly for like the permanence uh, and the ability to kind of um, work in many transparent layers without the under layers kind of uh, coming up. Here's like a painting of a bather. And I started to make larger works like when I had that residency in Quetico because I didn't have to take as much gear. Um, so I literally kind of like could, could kind of carry a larger portfolio. And now usually like when I paint in the Boundary Waters like I'll, I'll carry like a, a portfolio that's maybe like 30 inches by 40 inches or something. So pretty, I can work relatively large. So this is a painting that's like 30 by 36 and you know like a really unique aspect of um, like wilderness cam wilderness camping and exploring is like literally just kind of the way that it forces you out of your everyday habits and you know there's no sort of regular comforts of life you know there aren't sort of there's no cars no cell phones uh, no computers no radio so like the entertainment literally becomes just sort of like being together. 
you know, sharing stories, cooking food together, stargazing at night, building fires. Like that's kind of all that there is to do. Um, this painting was, you know, really about these kind of like wonderful windswept trees, but I thought it was kind of a good example to talk about um, like my palette, kind of, you know, like early on, I kind of really knew how sort of traditional this work was. And also, you know, I should say like kind of at the time, like painting from life seemed so, uh, so lame to me. Like I just couldn't imagine myself doing it. It was like the opposite of how I'd worked before. And um, I felt like I was making this like really, really traditional work. And I was like kind of embarrassed by it. So I was really kind of thinking about, you know, what are these, what are sort of small ways that can make this work seem like it's made now? Um, so, you know, like changing my palette um, from a more traditional palette to kind of like this high key, like saturated, more kind of modern palette is something that I really did. So, you know, like having a painting feel feel kind of as bright as it, as it, did, it did outside, like that became kind of important. So like a smaller moonrise. And a little island. And yeah, and like these paintings like take, you know, this painting is probably like 16 by 20 and you know, I'll spend maybe like three hours working on it. And you know, sometimes if like the light is changing quite a bit during the day, like I'll spend like an hour and then I'll come back the next day and, and spend an hour. And this is um, like a small little island. And you know, this sort of like really slowly kind of um, and carefully like exploring color a little bit. It's kind of in a more emotional way. So in 2015 or 14, I um, was awarded a studio in Dumbo through the Sharp Polenta Studio Program. And this year marked like a really major transition in like my work and also my own life because I had a baby my first baby like really early on in the residency and so I knew I wouldn't I would have basically a year of limited travel and so I really actually wanted to just sort of like use the year to kind of experiment and you know there was this kind of you know like I, I treated the year you know like as a way to kind of just like play with visual languages that I, I sort of like didn't have room for in the in the previous work so I was thinking about like my cottage again, but instead of sort of like painting, you know, the outside and the kind of portrait of a place, like I, I was actually kind of making paintings of the paintings and paintings of the objects inside of it. And even kind of making paintings that I would want in my own sort of fictional cottage. And this really kind of allowed me to sort of play with color and experiment with representation in ways that I hadn't been, sort of allowed myself to, to kind of work with in the last 10 years, and the, in the t 10 years previous to this. And sort of like the, f the frames kind of being here read as, you know, is it sort of like a frame or a wall? And again, I was sort of still thinking about like, is, you know, can I show sort of two places at once? Um, and so for example, like this, these are, you know, two very different paintings, but they're of the same fish. Um, you know, the painting on the left is kind of a painting as an embroidery, and then the painting on the right is um, a painting as a, of a book cover. And I really wanted to kind of like uh, open up my painting and sort of open ho up how I was thinking about representation, and hopefully to kind of like reveal a little bit more of my process. And, you know, and I think also just sort of like, you know, having my first baby and seeing kind of how he was respond, you know, as he was sort of growing and developing and how he was kind of responding to all of like these objects and paintings in my own house. And um, so I kind of got really obsessed with like the aesthetics of my own upbringing and kind of thinking just about how like representation and style of those objects and paintings kind of affects my own, affected my own taste. Um, and my own ideas of representation. Um, then kind of later on in the residency, I started to make paintings 
like of other paintings that I'd made kind of a lot of times before. And in particular, kind of like, I was, look, I was trying to kind of like crack open um, my process and maybe like reveal a bit more of my process and really kind of like loosen up the paintings and hopefully make them a bit more expressive. So like two night scenes and also kind of experimenting with this frame thing that I was really sort of obsessed with at the time and like the painting on the left being a more kind of like montage space, a kind of like transitioning space and then the painting on the right being uh, having like that physical frame. You know, I was thinking like a frame and a border, it, it can be a kind of like interior and a landscape um, and it kind of like can it also sort of be an object that represents class or aesthetics and taste. Um, you know, the frame is painted with like walleye camouflage or fishouflage. And like, um, I don't think you can really see, but like there's like loons in the water that are actual like earrings that are kind of like punctured through uh, the canvas. But um, kind of like eventually, like after this residency, like I eventually kind of like moved away from thinking about the frames and I just became, I, I just kind of realized that in a sense like, this obsession that I was having with like showing two places at once or like a kind of inside and the outside really had to do with uh, this realization that I figured out that, you know, like these places that are so important to me, like I was kind of missing all this information in a sense, like I was mis missing how uh, kind of like I felt about these places, right? Like I was, sh I was showing them and being sort of so true in a representational way, but I kind of wasn't, uh, representing kind of the w the rich way that I knew these p places uh, and the rich kind of like emotional life that they have for me. So my work from kind of like the past year has been sort of exploring that or trying to figure out like what that looks like. Yeah, so s just in a sense like, you know, can, can the work can they be sort of uh, like faithful representations, but also can, can I express kind of um, them in a more interior emotional way? And like, what does that look like? So, you know, really kind of uh, experimenting, uh, like keying up the color, um, you know, in this painting really kind of, you know, for instance, like the trees here, like the needles, you know, like are much bigger than they would actually be in life. So in a sense, like closer to that sensation of what it feels like to see like a sparkling moon through pine trees. So that's really kind of like what's been propelling the work for the last year. And like these, the, the last few paintings, oh, oops, sorry. That was actually my last slide. But um, the last maybe like five paintings were just in my um, my last show, solo show that came down in October um, in Milwaukee at Tory Foliard. Um, but I would very gladly take any questions. Thank you. <laughs>